Tuesday, how to be prepared for those worst case scenarios. Stuart Welch, financial planner with the Welch Group, joins us this morning to talk about financial strategies when natural disaster strikes. We know very well uh, we what do. happens based on what happened on April 27th. But this is not just, you know, the, the tornado season or hurricane season down on the Gulf Coast. This can be fire or anything else. Those That's things that you don't want to worry about, but you need to be prepared for, right? That's exactly right. I tell you, there nothing put an exclamation point on the need to review your coverage and come up with a strategy right. than the recent tornadoes. Okay, let's talk about You've got four points here, uh, so let me hit on these. Uh, first off, you say have emergency reserves. Yeah, you know, uh, emergency reserves, you want to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people lost everything, mm -hmm. and you want to, including their jobs. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of businesses were wiped out, and so it's really important for those people that have some money to get them through three or four or five or six months until they could get stabilized. Businesses could get back up and operating or they could find another job. Okay. Uh, and, you know, and if nothing else, because a lot of folks will say, well, I just can't afford to have that kind of reserve out there. Even having that money that's kind of that rainy day money that you're able to go to to help with just those basic incidentals uh, in the immediate aftermath of the situation will, will make a big difference too, right? It will. But you know what? If you can't afford to have reserves, you can't afford to be in the middle of a disaster. Mm -hmm. So it's it's all about prioritizing, Rick, and it's just it's just deciding you're going to do it and systematically begin to build it okay, up. Okay, here's one. You say video your stuff. I mean, going yeah. out there, make sure you have that camera. Go through and shoot everything that you have in your house. Well, you know, you see the pictures of the tornado, and it's just they're <coughs> just they're just mind-boggling. You know, they're like nothing but slabs there. There's nothing left. And the question is, is how do you get reimbursed from the insurance company for all your stuff if you have no idea what, what that stuff is? So a video camera, uh, keep that uh, film somewhere other than your house or keep a copy of it. Uh, that we talk a little bit about cloud technology where yeah. you can store things uh, up in the cloud, sort yeah, of, so to speak. Yeah. And, uh, and had that, that would make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars difference for a lot of these people. Yeah, so, so just take those documents you need to have access to, put them on some kind of cloud, put them on some kind of digital storage system where you can get access to them, even if, you, even if your house is, is, a, is a mess. Um, you also say, you know, and this kind of goes back to that first com conversation, keep some cash on hand. Be able to go over there and put your hands on some cash that you need immediately that you can use to, to pay who you need to. Yeah, I think a lot of people found that uh, they didn't have anything included any pocket cash and they were really just at the mercy of, mm -hmm. of social services or uh, uh, Red Cross and so you want to keep some cash you know just enough to get you through two or three days mm -hmm. would have made a big big difference for an awful lot of and, these and, people. And as you touched on earlier always not a bad idea to go in and check your insurance policy see what it says see what you are covered on in worst case And scenarios. I think an easy answer to that Rick is to have your insurance agent once every 12 to 24 months do a review and make sure the coverage is adequate. All right Stuart Welch good to see you pal. Thanks, Rick. Thanks so much. More to come on Good Day Alabama. The